few clients into personal training realized I didn't know shit. Um, I thought it was one of those jobs where, oh, yeah, I'm an athlete. I train myself. I can hop right in and train other people. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's not like that at all, actually. Um, so my parents were very supportive, and they said if I wanted to go back to school and do kinesiology or do um, exercise science, something like that, that they were fully on board with it and, you know, would help out. Um, so I ended up finding the Czech school and that was pretty big. Um, what, uh, what were things like in the Czech Institute when you first, well, how, how did you find out about them originally? So it came down to looking at the holistic health school, the Czech Academy or doing like clinical exercise physiology. So I've always been really captivated, enamored, whatever word you want to use by the idea that you know, we can heal ourselves. A little bit of movement goes a long way. A little bit of diet goes a long way. Um, so I had all these thoughts that I was really impressed with, but at the same time, I was dealing with autoimmune. I had really bad psoriasis, eczema. Um, and then my father is a heart disease guy. So his dad died of heart disease. Uh, my dad had a couple heart attacks before I was even like 10 years old. He had one before I was born, one whenever I was six. Um, and so we had that underlying stuff too. And I just, I found this, how to eat, move and be healthy and started reading it and was like, oh, there's a lot of stuff in here that might be able to help my dad with and see where it takes us. Um, so I thought it was interesting. And how did you originally find how to eat, move and be healthy? And for, for, uh, anybody listening, how to eat, move and be healthy is, uh, it's a book by Paul check and anybody that's familiar with marketing, as far as like funnels go, that's usually the beginning of the funnel for the Czech Institute is someone happening upon that book, uh, either directly or from a practitioner who talks about it. I have, I've actually got a, a video where I talk about it, but yeah, continue. How, how did you originally find the book? YouTube. Um, so from, from I was, Paul directly? No. So I was oh working God. Do at, we have the same entry point? I was working at a nutri shop. Um, so like a supplement store. So I was personal training, dude. It was the sickest setup. I was personal training and I was working at a supplement store. Mm. Oh, yeah, get this pre-workout. Yeah, come see me, and then we'll really put it to use. You need this protein? Yeah, come see me, too. So I was, like, kind of double dipping, but um, I was looking for the next step. So I didn't think that training was going to be something that I did forever. So I was looking at the schools, and I just typed in uh, holistic sports training, and then this video of Paul popped up, and I started watching it, and down the rabbit hole we went, and then I found the book, and then... Um, like I said, just kind of went through the book and saw what it was saying and compared it to what I was doing and what my father was doing and, um, just kind of said, okay, yeah, like this is the program that I'm going to do. This is where I'm going to go. And so I applied, waited three days, got my acceptance. And then I got the acceptance email at like 10 o'clock at night. I'm usually in bed by like 9 45. Um, so I got this email and I'm like, okay, yeah, like I already told the parents I was going to bed. So, you know, I'll tell them in the morning that I got accepted. Three hours later, my dad died. Oh my God. So, um, like applied to this school to help him out and, you know, do some of the health stuff. And then, uh, he had a heart attack that night. So what does, what did, what did that feel like? You know, you have this decision of I'm going to be doing something for someone else and then that someone else passes away, but you still have this acceptance or this, this theoretical path in front of you. But so that was the coolest thing. Like, I mean, granted it wasn't on mic or it was just, you know, part of our lunch conversation earlier, whenever I said how, you know, I really felt like it was my like coping journey. It was my healing journey. So first year it was like, okay, well, you know, we'll see where it goes. Second year it kind of hit where it was like, oh man, this is actually for me. Like this is gonna, this is gonna do a lot more for me than I imagined. Now, three years later, I look back and it was the best thing that could have happened. I mean, I, and that's not like saying, yeah, my dad dying is the best thing that could have happened. But I mean, like the fire that it lit under me and then just how I see the world and just, you know, the events that have come after that, it's insane. So what was the, what was like the, the perspective that that kind of gave you? You know, like you, you, after, you know, a year or two kind of realized like, okay, yeah, I, I started this for someone else who, you know, isn't, isn't here anymore. How did, what was it about it that made you go, you know, this is, this is for me. And how did you utilize it in that way? Ah, man, I like the, 
the Tai Chi movements, you know, they're kind of woo woo, but I mean, at the same time, like once you kind of get into it and feel something, it's like, okay, yeah, there's something there. But I was, I mean, 22, 23, something like that years old, uh, 24. I don't even know. Um, but over 21, under 25 ranges. So to start learning about spirituality and uh, just mental and feelings and emotions and, you know, some of these other things that, you know, it's not, it's not on the forefront. Like, you know, talking about your emotions and your feelings and journaling and like doing some of the dark stuff. That's not something that a lot of people do or even something that people know about. I've, uh, I've covered this in many episodes and you people who are listening know that as long as you can be, get a huge body and get really into bodybuilding, doesn't matter how fucked up your mental health is, right? Exactly. And so, <laughs> I mean, it's, and, you know, being an athlete too, and um, we can get into this later as well, but I mean, my exterior was everything. Like on the inside, there's not a lot. Like the autoimmune, that was mental. And now the stress of losing a parent, mental. Um, I was huge. Like I was probably one... 98 and i think the last like little end body reading i did said that like i was 105 pounds of muscle and chilling at like 10 right. percent body fat mm -hmm. so i was looking good there's a there's a weird thing that happens in your in your early 20s and um you know I, i'm at some point in time i'll talk about like my whole like fitness journey or whatever but like i remember having such a similar thing because i i've also got uh like i got diagnosed with colitis when i was like 10 or 11 or something like that and uh at the time, there was no treatment for it for kids. I don't know what's different about treating an adult versus a kid, but like they were like, oh, yeah, he's got colitis and we're going to do this and, you know, that'll be that. But things never improved. Like they didn't tell me anything that was going to make it better. And then to make it worse, when, you know, an early 20s guy is getting into lifting weights and shit, you start slamming protein shakes and you have fucking like diarrhea and gas all the time. Everybody's just like, oh, ha, ha, protein farts. And I was just like, oh, okay, this is just what happens. And it's like, you know, years later, I'm like, I'm like, what the fuck, dude? Like, I didn't take a solid shit for years because, like, all I cared about was muscle. I had no idea how fucked up my insides were. I mean, a part of that, just, you know, building up the exterior. I mean, I'm a, I'm a kid from, you know, somewhat of a big town, but I've always been the only Jewish kid. So I've always been, like, the picked on one or something like that. So, you know, I can build up the exterior and, you know, people think I'm a little bit cooler. I can build up the exterior and... Girls will think I'm a little bit more attractive. Like, I definitely hid behind my body for a while. Um, and then in college, our hockey games were at midnight. So the nervous system was just all sorts of fucked. Slamming so, mean, pre-workout every day and then getting up and playing hockey games at midnight and going to bed at 5 a.m. just to do it again the next day. Like, it was rock star shit uh, for four years. It's truly the shit that you can only get away with in your early 20s. Oh, my God, yeah. So... I was doing all that, and then, like I said, you know, the skin issue started in college, so had it there, and then um, it still is here, but, I mean, I got it to finally, like, calm down, like, two years ago, so been a lot of learning and a lot of, like, reformatting and just taking different looks, so I went to, from 198 before the death, after the death, I was 170, dropped a shit ton of weight, just depressed. Um, was that just from not eating or was that from you eating more intentionally, not caring about muscle? Or? No, dude, I, it was weird. Um, I had a little parasite infection too, which didn't help. But I think just like the depression and all that, just on top of it, just <laughs> um, really just took everything away from me. But I'm at a healthy like 185 now. I feel great. Mm -hmm. My poops look awesome. <laughs> um, I have a little run in with the skin every now and then. But I mean, we're cool. We're good. Oh, yeah. Hey guys, if you like that guest and you really liked this clip, that video right there has got the full context, which I think you're really gonna like. I'll see you there, later.